I still have to say it's some of the proudest and most moving and emotional moments I've had in this crisis to get together with my fellow sister and brother mayors from around the world to share information, to spread best practices, to just be there to counsel each other. I worked at one of our vaccine sites, and don't worry, I wasn't giving any of the shots, but I was doing every other job from directing traffic to talking to people, to being a medical assistant, to drawing the vaccine out from the, um, the vials. It was an emotional place to be as people cried, as people thought about hugging their parents and grandparents and grandchildren again, um, as the hope that we have not carried through this year um, replaced much of the trauma that we have. I have my own uh, personal story with this. Uh, I was discussing this with my mother and she said that I will not take the vaccine. I want to wait for two or three months. So two, three days later, I took the vaccine and she saw my photo in the newspaper. I received a call from her and she said that if you, if you took the vaccine, I will, I will do it. And it's, it's incredible to see the faces of people that are getting their vaccine. It's, 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 it's quite, quite, quite amazing. But in the beginning, we saw that the, there was a real equity gap in who was getting access to the vaccines. So we decided to use our vaccines to really target those communities of color who are most vulnerable to the disease, needed the vaccine the most, but were closed out for either language barriers, access to healthcare, or other reasons. Because of uh, equity gap, um, our country really is, has to wait for the richer countries to receive and we have got limited doses uh, in, our, in our country and in our city. Part of what I wanted to do in convening this was make sure that we are speaking with one global voice about the importance of vaccine equity, that we don't just look, those of us lucky enough to be in a wealthier country, don't just look at securing vaccinations for our own people, but that we un understand just as we do with climate, the interconnectedness of people everywhere. And the need for me to make sure that somebody in Tanzania or somebody in Indonesia or somebody in uh, Colombia has a vaccine as much as somebody here in Los Angeles. To ensure that, you know, the countries that don't have the resources to bring in the vaccines are not left behind because at the end of the day, if um, COVID continues in any of our countries that are less uh, uh, financially strong, it will continue in those countries that are financially strong. Vaccine equity is not an act of charity. It's the best and fastest way to control the pandemic globally and to reboot the global economy. And the most effective and strategic way to suppress transmission and save lives globally is by vaccinating some people in all countries rather than all people in some countries. And I think there are real parallels here with climate change and our core work as C40 cities, that realization that we're, no one's going to be safe if everyone isn't safe. And uh, from this point of view, I, I want to add my voice to support the message that without equal access to the scene across the globe, there is no chance for a green and just recovery. And I think that's the role of C42. We are, we are the place, as Mayor Garcetti says, where we bring mayors from all over the world together. And by us focusing on access, equitable access throughout the world, we will make the whole world a more healthy place. Um, we can't be a, a healthy in climate if we're not healthy in, in how we approach health in each of our countries. So.